David Price, today there are a lot of conversations about corruption in this House, in the European Parliament. People are very much concerned. So uh, does the European Parliament and do the European institutions have sufficient legal frame to fight corruption in an efficient way? Well, one would think that it would be very necessary and there was a document right at the beginning of the European Community System which would give powers to the general public and also officials about stopping corruption. Um, I've written about Schumann and Schumann was very much involved in fighting corruption in France and in Germany. Um, he said the, if a bureaucracy got out of hand it was the most dangerous thing that could be uh, attack the whole community system. So one would expect that there would be certain guarantees in the community system which would prevent uh, corruption taking place. The question is why is it not being active at the moment? Uh, David Price, as an author of books on Schumann, so why do you think our, the European Commission resists this publication of this document, which is a legacy of Schumann, who is absolutely uh, the great uh, founding father of this project? Well, this is actually still a big mystery, which I'm looking into, and eventually I've been in communication with some of the archives uh, around Europe. Um, the, the problem was that there were a number of documents at the beginning, the coal and steel community, for example, envisaged a, a single energy market, um, uh, which is very useful today. Um, but it also had other documents about relations with the, with, uh, the uh, Court of Justice of, of the Commission, and it had a relation with the uh, Council of Europe specifically with the Convention of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. So this is one area which people haven't really looked into and it was basically the whole history behind why the Convention of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms wasn't active inside the community system. Because if it was, there'd be far less corruption going on. And there was one document which wasn't, hasn't been published for 70 years, and that's what I'm looking into at the moment. 70 years hasn't been published, but uh, have you got any explanations? What was the answer? Because it, it wasn't once that you addressed the European Commission. What is always the answer? Why they resist? It's still unclear. Uh, it's unclear to you, it's unclear to me, because they, I don't get a straight answer. Um, and I've actually requested the document which is in the archives of the French Foreign Ministry and I have a copy and now I have uh, what's called a, a copy uh, uh, an authenticated copy from the archivist so there is a document um, unfortunately it appears that some of the other member states didn't get this document so um, that is a very curious thing going on so what was the reason for that whether well, it was negle negligence whether it was some sort of uh, plot by the bureaucrats or whether they considered it to be of a different legal basis and they could refuse it, I don't know. So I'm looking into that. But the Commission has the document and there's no reason why the Commission shouldn't publish it. Um, the Commission has a duty uh, legally to publish all the documents about the beginning of the European community, specifically about how to stop corruption, which would be very useful for the public, but also has a duty of history that uh, all the historical documents should be published. They not only refuse to publish this particular thing, which is a treaty, but also have refused to publish the Schumann Declaration in full. And that's even more curious, because that's just a speech. So, uh, uh, sorry, David Price, uh, uh, would you like to say that, uh, in the other words, uh, that there is a deficiency of transparency, actually, because uh, the European institutions, uh, they uh, establish themselves, or they have this image of absolutely transparent and open to people and democratic institutions, that from what you say, one might conclude that there is a serious deficiency of transparency, even in historic, uh, in historic period of the institutions. 
Yes, well, I mean, I've been taking it through to the Ombudsman uh, quite a number of times over a period of 10 years. So it's not something uh, which is, uh, you've had time to cogitate and meditate a proper answer. But last time I got an answer which said, we don't have enough room on the Commission website to publish some of these documents, which are about, you know, two or three pages long. So that's the level of argument they've come up with at the moment. Um, it's to totally inadequate. These are the beginnings of European democracy and they are vital. And I ask for them to be released and published before this big one or two year conference on the future of Europe. And the commission agreed. Uh, I wrote a letter to the president, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, I got the acquiescence of the vice president of the commission. In, uh, in fact, two vice presidents, I mentioned it in a public uh, meeting and they said they would publish it. Uh, the council also said they would publish it. So the conference on the future of Europe went by without these documents being published. I mean, that's a very curious operation. Why something couldn't be published and discussed in a conference on the future of Europe dealing with democracy. So, uh, is there a lack of um, legal instruments to impose this publication on the Commission? So, what what can help to bring this light on well, the historic documents? Yeah, there are two aspects. One is political, um, and the other is legal. So, my question is: Was it a political refusal, or was it the legal department who realised these are important documents and would cause? a wrecking ball to the silence and corruption which is going on behind closed doors. Um, I don't know, I mean that would imply complicity in, in some of these things. Uh, the Commission is doing a lot of things, I, in fact all the politicians, the national politicians are getting away with a lot of operations which uh, don't really comply with public um, agreement. You know, uh, they had uh, treaties which pub the public disagreed with and they passed them anyway. Um, uh, the, for example, the, the so-called uh, constitutional treaty uh, was roundly defeated in France and Netherlands and some other countries weren't allowed to have a referendum. And yet the same articles were reproduced in the Lisbon Treaty um, word for word. So, I mean, that is not only something which could be brought up about lack of human rights. It's actually totally contrary to human rights when you bring in something which pe the people have refused. So do you have uh, still hope after so many years of efforts that you can achieve, you can attain your goal and uh, this uh, very crucial for European democracy documents can be published? It's inevitable. It's uh, that, you know, uh, a motor of corruption uh, uh, a machine of corruption can only go on for a certain period of time and then it, it, it runs out of steam. Um, and the people have been talking about the democratic deficit for, for decades and now we're getting into very serious business. We have a major war going on in Europe, which should not have happened if we'd had the proper institutional arrangements. So uh, now we're getting the consequences of uh, institutions which some of them have really got out of hand um, and then they're no longer within a democratic ambit um, so how we get involved in a war uh, which is a de facto war but are not a de jure war and we're the two most corrupt countries in, in the European continent are fighting each other and yet the institutions are totally on the side of one of them and not the other uh, that's a curious question to, should, should be asked. And uh, who's gaining from it? Uh, it's not just uh, Europe we should talk about, we should talk about China and maybe the United States as well. Uh, we're talking about world politics at the moment. So it's crucial, as far as I understand, it's crucial to have these Schuman documents to stop uh, these shady deals and bring transparency to all the institutions. Yes, uh, but the other things that can be done as well. I mean, if you want to deal with the Lisbon Treaty, well, you may have some questions about the, the uh, 
whether it has public support, but in the Lisbon Treaty it says the Council of Ministers meeting should be open to the public. I would like to see all the councils open to the public. It says the councils should be as open as the Parliament. We're, sitting, we're standing in the Parliament at the moment and they have hearings, they have lots of meetings, but they're all open to the public. And the Treaty of Lisbon says that the council should be as open as the Parliament. And I'd like to see that happen. So I hope the public will move forward and get the council to do what the treaties say, because it's their treaty. It's a, politicians created this treaty. Let's see them obey it.